So last week, you had me listen to a recording from James Gurney, who is, what would you say, like a famous, I mean, he's a famous painter, right? Yes, he, he created Dinotopia. Okay. So, so he, it's pretty big. Yeah. Right, so he's an extremely successful painter, right? And the recording was older, you can kind of tell, but he's talking about what it's like to be at home, um, you know, doing freelance or working on your own, like, and trying not to get distracted. And he's like, oh man, it's really tough. You know, I have my studio or I do my art, but in the next room over, I've got all my magazines. You know, anytime I could walk over and like pick up a magazine. So I have to fight that temptation. And I'm like, wow, that's adorable. That <laughs> This guy's fighting off the temptation to open a magazine. I think if I was in solitary confinement and somebody handed me a magazine, I'd be like, no, thanks. I, right. <laughs> I guess, I mean, it's old. Like this is pre, I got, I guess pre-internet or at least like pre-modern internet, but it just made me it think. Is the 80s, or the 80s or the, okay. yeah, so, I think so, it's the early 80s. Okay. So definitely pre like internet. Oh um, yeah. yeah. But it just made me think about how different the world is now and how like people always were, have been trying to get you to spend your time on something, right? Like the people who make a magazine, they want you to buy it. They want you to look at it. They want you to see the ads and all that stuff, but it's a magazine. Like it's just ink on paper. It's pretty limited on what it can really do, but technology has progressed so much. We have built, I mean, billions and trillions, really, dollars of infrastructure. We have spent billions of dollars on research on how to get people to spend their time on their phones, on social platforms, on Netflix, on whatever. Like the amount of like human capital going into that is astounding. And we are at a point now where like what it takes to not spend all your time on that stuff is, I mean, it's, it's like one of the biggest problems I think you face if you're trying to, you know, work from home or be an artist or do anything productive at all. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is everywhere. Yeah. I, uh. I guess, I guess there's two, two things I want to talk about today. One is, just what it, it, things have evolved so fast it's almost hard to even understand what's really happening right like there's there's things going on that we don't necessarily recognize like there's there's sort of gambling mechanics that get baked into social platforms there's habits that we form that like we don't even think about or realize are are happening um and then also i want to talk about like how do you deal with that as somebody who's you know, like us, I mean, I work from home full time. So I have to like contend with that all the time, every second of the day, uh, you work from home, I guess half the time. Right. Yeah. And actually right now I'm working completely from home. Okay. So it's like um, as much of a issue for you too. So I figured we would be talking about this sooner or later. So, um, yesterday I decided to not use my phone like at all. And oh, I'm a pretty, nice. I don't use my phone that much anyway, mm -hmm. but you know, I'm always like checking the news, uh, just browsing Instagram real quick or, or whatever. Um, so I use it a moderate amount. Um, but yesterday I was like, you know what, I'm going to do what we always talk about and just no phone for the whole day. Mm -hmm. And so like the, and I'm trying to like observe my brain <laughs> dealing with this. And, um, for the first half of the day, I'm like frustratingly uh kind of bored and sort of frustrated mm -hmm. like uh, i had a list of things i wanted to, to get done yesterday um which included like focusing on drawing and everything um and it was like hard because every few minutes you're like i need to do something yeah. and you're like oh i need to check my phone i can't check my phone and then you try to focus again and but like halfway through the day for some reason i'm like oh this is now i'm like really wanting to focus on drawing and then it just kind of like it was a lot easier the second half of the day i don't know what the science is on that maybe it was just like me tricking myself into it but right. then i i had a much more uh fulfilling day of drawing the second half um because i was just like committed then i was like okay i no more phone 
it's all drawing mm-hmm. and I'm really starting to enjoy it. But the beginning was tough. <laughs> okay. Um, so this, this was all yesterday. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I actually lived without internet for a while. Um, this was like my biggest personal experiment, like along those lines, it was probably like 2005 or six or something. Um, so pre smartphones, like I think the iPhone came out like 2009. Um, and yeah. me and my roommate, um, we had just moved in somewhere. We were both going to school and we're like, Hey, let's, let's just not get internet. Um, and we didn't, and it was awful. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it like that happened at first. It's like, man, you know, there's just this whole distraction that's not there. And again, like I didn't have a phone. So there without Internet, there was you couldn't do anything other than like, you know, type a document on your computer. Like it really was no information at all. We probably had like text messages and stuff on a dumb phone, but that was it. Um, yeah. But it, it started off good. It felt like um, oh, I almost I tripped on my own headphone cord. Um, <laughs> I'm OK. Uh, it started off good. Um, same thing. Like I felt productive. I felt like I could focus on stuff, but I, it, it quickly felt like totally unsustainable. Um, because you like, sometimes you actually do want to know stuff. Um, like the internet actually is really valuable. And if you can't use it to communicate, to like check, you know, class related things, I couldn't print anything. I couldn't do just all of that stuff. And there, there was a lot of times where like I needed, you know, some piece of information like to look up and I would have to go to the library and it'd be closed and whatever. I mean, right. it, it felt like not a valid way of operating, but it was interesting because it kind of, w- with as much of a withdrawal as you go through, it makes it pretty clear that like, you're very hooked into the it, well, all that stuff. That's That's the other side of it is that you really can't, if you really want to to live your life without all of that, you have to like go live in a cabin yeah. on a mountain and just exist by yourself. Like like culturally, we just you, you can't exist that way. Yeah. Um. So like, what's the point where you go over necessity? Like, there's necessity right. of living, and then there's everything above that where it just becomes distraction or overuse or something. Yeah. Um, I- I guess that's kind of what I'm thinking, right? Is that like, I've tried completely removing myself from the internet. Um, and this was like earlier when it was even less ingrained, like this was way before Slack and you know, all the, every piece of communication happens online, zoom, all that stuff. And like, even then it wasn't really feasible. I mean, we caved after I think a month or so and just got internet. Um, so like now it'd be even more impossible. Um, but it, like the extreme of getting rid of it to me is not viable unless you are just really, I mean, I'm a software developer. Like I can't go for more than a few minutes without internet most of the time, like even only for legitimate right. uses. So like, it's just, you can't really go that far, but then clearly there's a lot of like predatory aggressive elements to it where like, like you said, you stop using it for one day and you feel the withdrawal basically like you have a compulsion to check your phone constantly i know that i do like i can stop using it for 20 minutes and i feel that right and well yeah the the smartphone is very smart it's very good at getting you to 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 need it in so many different ways not just like oh i want to slack off it's like oh i'm gonna write some notes on here oh wait what's this Mm -hmm. what's this notification and you just keep going (laughs) um so it, it's like, even if you look at your phone with good intentions, it's like, by the time you're done with it, it's 30 mm-hmm. minutes later and you forgot what you were doing. Yeah. It's amazing um, that you can like open your phone to do something specific and forget what you're doing, like within half of a second, like, or just right. wind up somewhere else. And that happens to me all the time. So how do we, how do you fight it? Well, I mean, I have I have different ways that I try to deal with it, but they don't always work. Right. Um, well, so I have not figured it out. Um, I, will, I will say that. Um, but it is a huge problem for me. Like, I would say it is the biggest, like, day-to-day struggle for me as somebody who works from home. Like, if I sit down and I need to work an eight-hour day and be productive and build 
you know, whatever piece of software I'm building or whatever it is I'm working on, like that is the biggest challenge I face in any given day. All right, sorry about that. I <laughs> gotta remember to turn off sleep on my computer. Um, okay, I was, I think I was saying day to day working on software, getting distracted is the biggest problem that I face. Like it's not anything technical or anything like that. Like that is the thing that will eat up the most of my time and derail a project. Okay. So when you get distracted, it's your phone, right? Most of the time. Um, it's not the TV or your computer. It's mostly your phone. Well, it's definitely phone. not TV. I mean, come on, like TV, it's, I cannot watch TV. I can do that. Um, but, okay. I, but it's, it's, it's things like Reddit and it used to be Facebook. I deleted my Facebook, which by the way, I highly recommend to anyone. I haven't regretted that for I a second. I have no, I haven't had a Facebook in a decade or something, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, you deleted Facebook before it was cool. Um, right, right. Anyway, but Instagram, Reddit, um, even just news sites, like I'll, you know, be browsing whatever random news site or something like all the content aggregators that like, you know, anything where like people can vote on stuff and like bring up the novelty and the, the time wasting stuff, um, like Reddit, stuff like that. That's what I get so, distracted by. So how much of it is because of habit and how much of it is like something you need to do or, or, or like, do you open up your phone just out of habit without anything yeah. that you're meaning to do and then get lost? Or is it like, I'm going to go do this thing and then you get distracted. So usually what will happen. Um, so like if I'm, if I'm working on a piece of software, usually the way it works is like I write some code and then I have to run it. Right. Like, so the, the computer has to compile the code, get it built and then like start up the program so I can look at it. So anytime I do that, like I say, you know, build and run, there's 10 to 15 seconds of just waiting. Like it just has to load, it has to crunch through stuff. And then after 10 or 15 seconds, it's running and I can look at it. And it is, I mean, inevitably, as soon as I hit that build and run button and I know that there's 10 or 15 seconds of downtime, I'm like switch to a new tab and I've opened Reddit or, or whatever it is, um, whatever yeah. my current like compulsion happens to be. And I don't like, it's not even a conscious thing. I mean, it's, it's a muscle memory. There's, you know, I hit command eight to open the, the new workspace. I control L to focus the URL bar. I type R, it auto completes to Reddit and I hit enter. And like, that's not, I don't think about that at all. Like those keystrokes are baked into my brain in a way where I like think, I'm there instantly. I think maybe get uh, fighting back a little bit would be to get rid of those keystrokes, get, get mm -hmm. rid of those easy accessible things. Like I, I removed my Reddit button from my homepage. Mm -hmm. Like it used to be, a, you open it up, you just click on it and I would waste so much time on there. And then after, you know, an hour or two of browsing Reddit, you get up, walk to the kitchen and you're like, what did I just do for two hours? Yeah. And then you like, can't even remember any of it. So Reddit, I feel is like one of the worst, but it, it is. if you, if you got rid of the, the accessibility of it, um, so, and you had to consciously make a decision to browse right. Reddit. Well, so I have, I have done a lot of those things and I totally agree. I mean, this is, this is my problem. Like in its, in its rawest form, if I'm doing nothing to deal with, you know, those distractions, that's what happens any moment of downtime and not, not even that, like, it's not even just if I'm waiting for it to, to build and run. It's like, if I get stuck on something, if I'm frustrated, if there's just, if I get tired, like almost any time my brain doesn't really want to do it anymore. Like my instinct is to switch to something distracting. Um, I mean, to yeah. me, like all those sites, Reddit and Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that, it's, it is easier to do that than it is to do nothing. Like it's a, it, to me, it feels like a lower brain state than anything else. Um, like if, if I do nothing, I start to think about stuff. And sometimes I think about things that I don't want to think about. And like, there's, it's not that easy to sit there and do nothing. It's almost like meditation, but Reddit is so like, there's so much pointless novelty, like things that are completely unchallenging to your brain, but they're amusing. It's like your brain right. doesn't think anymore. It's like it's off and it's just like churning through these these pointless images. Um, so I think I I think a lot of our use of uh, 
of all of that stuff, social media and mm -hmm. instantly clicking on Reddit is like our fear of boredom because yes. being bored is kind of like this uncomfortable feeling. Right. Um, because it, it's almost like it's begging you to do something. Yeah. It, it like your, yeah. your brain is like, do something that's uh, beneficial to you. <laughs> right. And yeah. then you have to make a decision. Whereas if you just do something like browse Reddit or whatever, you don't have to think or do anything. Yeah. I mean, that's, already... that's what I mean. Like it's I, being bored is not easy. It's not actually that comfortable. Um, yeah. Like to me, browsing Reddit and doing that kind of thing, it's, it is, you're not bored. Your brain is basically off. I mean, that's what it feels right. like. Yeah. Um, that's, yeah. yeah, that's been my experience too. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So that's, that's my framing of the problem for me. Like that is, that is why that happens. And if I don't do anything to keep it from happening, like that's where I'm at, where I'm just constantly switching to wasting time and doing that sort of thing. But I have spent some time reading about it, trying to understand a little bit about what's happening. So here's what I've, I've found. Um, what you were saying about like trying to eliminate that like easy keystroke thing is super true. And in fact, I think it's like really critical. Um, cause I was, I was reading how, uh, a lot of the social platforms, um, and like the sites that do that sort of thing, they actually borrowed whether intentionally or not, um, a lot of what they do from gambling. Uh, there's some really basic principles in gambling that work to get people addicted to, you know, those types of gambling. And in fact, the, I don't know what it's called, like association of people who design gambling stuff, like they're suing social media companies because they feel like they stole ideas from them. And I we have to find like an actual news story about that. It was a while ago. So I don't know what happened with that, but like that was, it's so blatant that that's actually like they sued them. And I guess the way it works is, or at least part of it, is that if you if you take a repetitive action, like pulling the lever on a slot machine, and you associate that with some kind of randomized reward, people get addicted to that. Um, it, it, like if, if you imagine a slot machine where when you pulled the lever, every time you did, like one penny came out of the slot, or a nickel maybe, um, at first you'd be like, wow, I can just pull this lever and money comes out. And you would do that like over and over and like a nickel would come out. And pretty soon you'd be like, well, this is really boring. Like there's nothing exciting happening. I'm just getting money. And you would start to do the numbers like, okay, it takes, you know, five seconds for me to pull the lever and then the wheels have to spin. And like, okay, so every 15 seconds I'm making five cents. So that's one third of a cent per second. That's only 20 cents a minute. And you're like, oh, it took me this much gas money to get here. And pretty soon you're like, this is stupid. I'm not going to sit here and pull this lever for eight hours a day. Like I, you know, whatever. But if you have a, a slot machine where you pull the lever and on average five cents comes out, but sometimes it's zero and sometimes it's a thousand dollars that completely changes the way your brain is thinking. Like you, every time you do that again, it's like that really comfortable, easy action. Like the reward is something unknown and your brain does a lot of weird things. Like it, it processes like a near miss almost the same way as a success. Like if you pull the slot machine lever and you see like the, I don't know, the sevens, right? And like one of them just rolls right past and like goes just underneath it. To you, it feels like you almost got it and it's really exciting and you get a shot of adrenaline, even though you didn't. And like the odds of getting a near miss are actually pretty high, it happens all the time. And you just rarely actually get like the full sevens or whatever it is. Right. Um, so, and, and actually, if you actually go to a casino and you see the slot machines, nobody pulls the lever because that's actually too hard. They put a button on the front and like you just press the button because that's an even more comfortable, easier, repetitive action. Um, so with social media, it right. is right. just like scrolling. Yeah, it machine. is the same thing as me like opening a browser tab, typing in the same familiar action I've done every time. And then every time it loads up, I don't know what I'm going to get, but it's some right. random thing. And sometimes it's really amusing or sometimes it's not. Or if you have, you know, if you post something, like every time you make a post on Instagram, you don't know what your reward is going to be, but it could be thousands of people love it and everybody loses their minds or not, but it's random every time.
If you posted a right. photo to Instagram and every time four people liked it, same four people, every single time, you wouldn't be very excited about that. Like it would not do the same things that it does now. Right. So right. we are, yeah, I have also read about this yeah. before and it, it makes a ton of sense to me, which is, it's different than watching TV. Yes. I think because TV doesn't really give you that same randomized reward. I don't think maybe in some ways it does. There's probably but a little, TV, but, but, but yeah, not like, the same. It's almost like there's less engagement right. with TV. It's a, I don't know. I've just, I've noticed that social media is even quicker. Like, like say scrolling through Instagram or whatever. Yeah. It's quicker and um, almost more damaging than sitting down and watching. I think so TV. for sure. Um, to me, it's so how like, does that, Go ahead. well, just, we were talking about like the idea of a magazine at the start here. Right. And like you contrast that with now. And again, like it's the same thing. They still, the magazine publishers and like, you know, TikTok, they want the same thing. They want you to spend your time on it and like watch ads and give them money. But the technology I think has progressed through so many stages to where like we have refined it down to where it is. I want to say it's almost perfect, but then that's probably wrong because I bet in 10 years, like it'll be way worse. But like, have you ever used TikTok or seen it? No. Well, I, don't. No, so I mean, really. just don't. It's awful. But I feel like they ha they're like the newest generation of this where you, you tap the button to the app and like you're immediately into a full screen video and you're watching it. And like you go to the next one by just a swipe and you like like it by tapping it. Like it's it's got it down to where you barely have to move your physical body to instantly be like sucked into consuming content and everything. Like there's there's no menus, there's no, I mean there is, but like it's not part of the main flow of you moving through stuff i mean it's so, so refined it's so perfect i feel like we could go into detail about why all these things uh get you to look at them but how does it negatively affect your brain outside of that so as soon as you turn it off what's left with you like what is the damage left yeah um i that's hard to say because it's like I know that it's doing something because I feel terrible if I spend two hours on Reddit or, I mean, I deleted TikTok pretty quickly, but I deleted it because I knew that I was getting hooked on it, like almost right away. But so I, I think what it, what all of these things do is it, it, it trains you to want reward immediately yeah, and, and randomly and like all the time. And so it kind of, uh, keeps you from working on something where you have to wait a long time for reward. Uh, what is it called? The, um, in that article we were reading, uh, distance reward or, uh, Oh yeah. Or deferred reward, something like that. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. um, so you, you almost like lose the ability to, yeah. to think of a reward that's further away or to work for something. Yeah. I think that's a huge part of what's damaging is that it, it is like this little, like micro dopamine dose that you never have to work for. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of what I was saying with like, if I'm coding, it's like, as I know that as soon as my mind is a little bit uncomfortable or like needs to push through something, that's when I instantly want to like go to Reddit or something and like, like abandon the hard path of me having to think about something. So, so yeah. what would happen if you had to think about something? If you, if you dealt with your boredom and and the the things that can pop up when you're actually bored which can really be huge yeah issue. Yeah, yeah i mean it's the what same like happen? i i mean i i fight with this like this is this is the problem but i also i mean i i work to try and keep it you know at least minimized to where i do focus on things um and it especially if i've had like a few days of doing a poor job with it where I have been distracted a lot and I have been like browsing, you know, things like Reddit and whatever. Um, it feels extra uncomfortable at first. Um, it's like, I've been laying in bed for days and like, I finally get up and it's like, Oh my God, like my muscles have atrophied and this, this sucks, but I, I can adjust fairly sort of quickly. Like it's never a walk in the park, but still like if I, I use the Pomodoro method a lot still, um, yeah. which I, you were using that too, right? Um, yeah, I still, I use a version of that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. So I set a timer for, for 20 or 25 minutes or whatever. And then like, I just try very hard to stay focused during that period of time. And then I get a five minute break. I can do what I want. Um, and weirdly enough, a lot of times when I get that five minute break, like I'm not really wanting to browse Reddit or something, um, which seems weird, but I think it's because I never really wanted to browse Reddit. It's just like an escape. Like if I have a right. five minute break where I know that I don't need to do anything difficult, I don't need that. And I'm like, oh, I'll sit down and, you know, relax for a few minutes or I'll read a long form article that I've been wanting to read or whatever. Like my mind doesn't look for that escape anymore. Um, yeah. So that's that's like a big part of what what helps. But it is same thing. Like it takes me it's almost like I have to build some momentum that way of like, OK, today it's going to be kind of rough for the first two hours and then it gets easier and I feel better with it. Um, that's part of it. The other part, um, what we were just talking about, the like, you know, repetitive action random award. I've tried to like put things in place that keep that like repetitive action from happening. Um, so like I set this thing up on my computer where if I'm working and I switch to the browser, it locks the computer and I have to put in an administrator password and then it takes a second and then it unlocks it, which so I can so still you've just gotten really fast at the administrator. Well, password. I have, but it <laughs> I set a really annoying password. So it's actually like hard to type out um, yeah. and it does work. It's not perfect. Like I can still wind up, you know, wasting time, but it it means that like for those little moments where I want to switch to something distracting, it it's like this little bit of unpleasantness of like, oh, I got to put in this long password again and I have to wait a second. And like, it actually does a lot in removing that really smooth, like I'm not, I don't even realize I'm doing it thing where I'm just back on Reddit or I'm back on Instagram or something. So that's actually so, really helpful. Yeah. Well, so I have, I, I don't use Reddit anymore. Um, unless, you know, someone sends me a post or whatever, yeah, but yeah. I, I don't browse it anymore. Cause I was like getting way too into it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, I'm just never going to use Reddit again. Um, and I don't, I still don't watch TV anymore unless there's something very specific that both Heather and I want to watch, but yeah. me by myself, I, I never watch it. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't miss these things. I know. I don't miss Reddit. I never think about it. I don't miss watching TV. I, I don't think about it. Um, and the benefits are so much bigger. Yeah. Well, I think because when you browse Reddit or whatever, like it's not rewarding. You don't feel good afterwards. Like you don't miss right. something if it doesn't leave you feeling good. Like it's, it's the opposite of that. It makes you, it leaves you feeling crappy most of the time. To yeah. me, it's not, it's not like, oh man, I can't wait to get on Reddit later today. It's an escape thing. It's your brain wanting to do this very distracting, pointless thing because it's so like comfortable. Yeah. And it's, it's it's weird. Yeah, it is weird. It's not. It sucks. Yeah, it does. It's a huge problem. Um, okay, so I, well, I, I kind of wanted to talk about um, your visual memory and how that's affected okay. by a camera phone. And this is just my theory. I don't know. Love I want to know what you think about this. Okay. So, um, before, before you had a camera phone or before you had any camera at all, you had to look at something and take it all in and kind of memorize it. If you ever wanted to look back on it in your memory, if you wanted to form a memory of something, you had to yeah. look at it and think about it. Yeah. Um, but with, a, a super easy access camera phone you just pull it out take a picture and then move on to the next thing and uh looking back through those pictures you just kind of like mm -hmm. keep swiping you don't really like have super fond memories of all of these pictures you take because you take so many of them mm -hmm. um but i i think the reason why you, you don't get too attached to these things is because and stop me if you're not following along because no no i'm like, getting yeah so I, I think the reason why you don't get attached to these pictures is because you haven't spent any time with the subject that you're looking at. You haven't had time to like form an emotional connection with it because you just take a picture and then your brain goes, oh, I don't have to memorize that. I don't have to think about that because it's already taken care of. And then it just kind of moves on to the next thing. And so what you think is going to be like this super memorable thing, you just snap a picture and then go to the next thing. Yeah. It's like you never made any memory with it. And so you just have all of these 
pictures on your phone that don't really mean anything. So, okay, so I agree. And I think there's more to it even. Um, but so have, have you ever experienced this thing where like you're at some social event and you meet somebody and they tell you their name and you instantly forget their name? It's like it it's like it goes in your brain and you're like, nope, don't need that. And it's just gone. Yep. And I I guess the reason is that you're thinking about other things, like you're worried about how you're presenting yourself and like you're maybe a little bit uncomfortable or whatever. But for whatever reason, your mind just does not hold on to that person's name. That happens to me all the time and I hate it. Yep. I think that, yes, pretty much the same thing happens when you're out somewhere like on a hike and you see a waterfall. It's like your brain doesn't engage with the waterfall anymore. It's thinking about like taking a photo of it. And even more so than that, posting it to Instagram or yeah, wherever. And yeah. And like, it's, it's like the things you're looking for aren't you're, you're, I mean, you're honestly thinking more about social media than you are about the actual thing that you're experiencing. Right. And that's, I mean, social media is designed that way. Like it is a game that you play where you try to like, score points by putting stuff on there. And it, it like permeates every little part of your experience where you're just constantly thinking about that. And so, well, yes. So I think about this a lot because I'll, I'll look at something and then I'll try to draw it from memory later. And sometimes I'll take a picture because I'm like, oh, you know, just in case I need the, the picture for reference, I'll, I'll use that. Yeah. So if I try to draw something from memory later of something that I've taken a picture of for reference, I can't do it. I can't remember it like at all because I, I've used this picture as a yeah. crutch and I just, I never spent any mental uh, focus on the subject. But if, if I don't take a picture and I try to draw it from memory, um, I, I guess I focused a lot better on the subject and I took my time to like, to actually look at it. Yeah. Um, That's interesting because I wasn't really thinking about it from like a, an artist's perspective, but you have a pretty honest way of knowing whether or not like that image is in your head. Like for me, I can kind of think that I remember something, but it might be way wrong. And it's always kind of hazy and like symbolic anyway. But if you're going to yeah. actually make a picture of it, you probably find out pretty quickly if you actually have it in your head or not. Right. And so a lot of artists will just like, oh, I want to paint that, snap a picture and then go to the next thing. And they never like look at it. Yeah. And I, I do that too. But I, I've been trying very hard not to do that. So, and it's tough because you have to like take that risk of like, okay, I really want to paint this, but you know, so you want yeah. to take the picture so you don't forget it, but actually you'll, you'll remember a whole lot more if you just look at it and yeah. put away the camera. Yeah. And I think it's because as soon as you press that button, your brain goes, I don't need to, I don't need to remember that. I, I don't have to waste any, any energy um, in remembering that. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I, I think the social media part of it makes it a lot worse, but I mean, even yes. in the simple case, like taking photos, um, I guess means that you don't have to turn your brain on. But I, I mean, if that were the only problem, I think that wouldn't be nearly as bad as just this like way of thinking where you're walking around through nature and you, all your brain is doing is thinking about like what gets me the most points. Um, right. That is such an awful like dystopian yeah. reality that we live in um so are are we like as the human race are we like just forever crippled by this like uh, we could be this intelligent but actually we're doomed to being this intelligent because of our previous <laughs> intelligences uh inventions like I, are we doomed i I think the answer is yes. Um, I mean, I hate to say that because that's so defeatist, but I honestly do think that the answer is that like we've invented it. To okay, so have you heard the Nick Bostrom metaphor like with the ball and the chalice and everything? I might have told you Probably, this at some point. Go ahead. And okay, tell me. so Nick Bostrom is this philosopher guy. Um, he talks a lot about like AI and humanity and existential threats, stuff like that. But he has this this metaphor that he's known for. He says that every time humans invent something, it's as if we're reaching into this big chalice and we're pulling a ball out, like the, the chalice of invention, right? And sometimes we invent something that's just purely good. You can think of it like we pull out a ball and it's white. Um, and a, maybe like 
antibiotics or something would be a white ball, right? Like it just, it alleviates suffering. It saves lives. It's just objectively a good thing for humans. Well, antibiotics could be a gray ball. I don't, I don't know if that one's all white, but okay. <laughs> they're, I mean, they're pretty good, right? Like wh whatever, like there's, there's yeah. Downsides, but yes. Continue. Okay. Yes. But whatever, whatever you want to use for the white ball exam, maybe there isn't a pure white ball, but it's pretty good. Like all in all. But something else you might pull out and it could be a gray ball, like splitting the atom. And you think, well, you know, you can use splitting the atom to create nuclear power. And that's like a, a huge benefit to humanity. Um, but you can also build a nuclear bomb and that's, you know, terrible. But if you think about it, like that ball could have been black. You know, if if it turned out that building a nuclear bomb was really easy, where you could just do it in your garage for like $50 of hardware store parts then that would probably be the end of mankind. Like there are so many people in the world and there are enough of them who would do that to where cities would blow up like every few days or something. I mean, that would have been just the most horrible, probably the end of mankind event. And once you invent it, like you can't uninvent it, right? Like we kind of got lucky that it turns out to be super, super hard to build a nuclear bomb. Like you need a government and, you know, billions or trillions of dollars and stuff. Anyway, so there's this question of like, is there a black ball in the chalice? You know, once we invent something, you can't uninvent it. It's in the world now. And we just kind of, you know, pull things out of this ball whenever we want. We don't really think about it that way. So I wonder, I don't think that TikTok black ball is a black the ball. thing that, that destroys. Yeah, everything. yeah. The black ball being the thing that we cannot uninvent and it will destroy us as, as humans. Um, so I don't think that social media is a black ball, but I think it might be a pretty dark gray one. Um, I mean, we've already seen in recent years, like how much, you know, how much power you can wield by using these social platforms. I mean, you can manipulate elections, you can buy huge amounts of influence for whatever it is you're interested in buying it for. We've seen conspiracy theories like growing like wildfire, whereas you know, 20 years ago, there were plenty of conspiracy theories, but they were much more contained, or at least it seemed like it. You know, it's become mainstream right. of like almost a reality denial type thing. Like that stuff is growing because we've invented this thing. And that's not so, even to talk about like the distracting part of just stealing people's right. attention in time. Yeah, I completely agree. So, yeah, I, I'm a pretty firm believer in for every innovation, there's a downside. I think uh, I no agree. matter how there's always a flip side yeah um yeah. just like i was joking with my friend the other day that um they're gonna start you know just delivering groceries and i was like yeah that's gonna uh, destroy the talent of shopping for groceries and i was joking but then i was like well there is like this small talent of you know there's a small art of shopping for groceries and that will be lost eventually and yeah. so like at every every tiny little thing has mm. a downside um, i agree and I think the downside with the things that we've invented is big, maybe really big. Um, yeah. It's hard to quantify like how how much, you know, something like social platforms and phones and whatnot are like taking from people. But I do think it's a lot. I know that for me personally, it's like, like I said, it's like my biggest problem day to day of being productive and like doing what I need to do. It's that. Yeah, that sucks. It does. <laughs> like, like, I mean, you look at, you know, the great people of history. Yeah. You know, like Da Vinci and Michelangelo and whatever. And it's like. I know if they had TikTok, would they have done what they did? I mean, I don't, I know. don't think so. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, can we ever be that great? You know, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, obviously I can't because. Well, I, you know, old and you too know, late, but yeah, you probably are too um, old. Um, yeah, I here's something else I I've thought about. Um, I remember being a child, and I mean like a child, and I remember reading the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Like I I read the Hobbit, and then I read the Fellowship, and then the Two Towers, and Return of the King, like back to back, as a child, and I loved every single second of it. Like it was so enthralling. The idea of getting bored at some point, like that was so far out of my reality. Like I couldn't stop. I had to be forced to go to bed and forced to eat. Like I was consumed by that. 
So why? I, I've read it as an adult and I'm like, oh my God, this Council of Elrond, like how long does this go on? And like, I don't care what the Hobbit houses look like and this endless exposition. And I, st I mean, I still love the books, but like my attention span, my ability to be like anything other than completely stimulated is so different than it was when I was a kid. And I know that it's the fault of the internet and like this reality that we live in. But we could go back to that. Why are we throwing away? Can, I, I don't know all if we can. That? I don't know if we can. Can you have a job where like you don't have the internet? I mean, I can't. Like I work remotely. I would never would have gotten a job if I didn't, if I wasn't on different platforms and LinkedIn and whatever. I mean, like that stuff is a requirement. I have to do video calls all the time. I'm on Slack all the time. Even just like doing my job requires me to constantly be on Stack Overflow and reading Apple documentation and everything. Like it's always there. And I, I don't think I could do it if I didn't have that. Yeah. I, I'm not trying I'm to be defeatist. I'm just not sure. No, I completely am just as defeatist because I'm thinking through my every day and it's like, nope, you can't, <laughs> you can't do it unless you go live in a cabin in the middle of the woods and grow your own crops but right the you know throw method i guess but it's like it's just so frustrating yeah that i mean it doesn't just happen to us it happens to everyone yeah yeah I, and like, it affects it, everyone if you're going to do anything uh, full stop like if you're going to do anything you have like this is probably going to be the biggest thing you deal with is getting distracted by this stuff it's everywhere yeah. I will say this, I have, I sound really negative, but I have made improvements by specifically doing a lot of those things where like using a timer to kind of box my time and like give myself these little moments of like intentional break. You know, if I sit down and say, I'm going to do nothing but pure focused work for the next eight hours, like that is not sustainable. Like there have been days where I can, but for the most part, like it just gets really fatiguing and I start falling back into that loop of like getting distracted and, you know, browsing social media. Um, so that yeah. is helpful. Like give yourself these little breaks. And I think that that loop of like that repetitive action reward thing is really critical, uh, at least for me, like those things that I've done of like, you know, the computer locks when I open the browser and it takes me a minute, which means I can still get to the browser. I can still use it if I need to search for something but it helps break that like constant habit. Um, I have Reddit blocked on my phone and it's really difficult to enable it. So I can't just sit there and like, you know, mindlessly scroll on my phone. Like those things actually have added up to being really helpful. Yeah. So. For me, the easiest way is to just like cut it off completely. If, yeah. if there's anything that I can cut off completely, yeah. just do away with it. Yeah. Um, otherwise I just, walking that line of like oh i'll just use it a little bit just use it here and there and it yeah. just it never ends up that way because you can't you can't control that when your brain is like turned off doing these things you don't mm -hmm. make good decisions yeah um yeah i agree i mean I, like I said i got on tiktok and i was like oh my god i have to get rid of this like this is this is so bad this is like it's yeah. it's well it's too good like it's it's too refined yeah. It does such a great job of like, I felt like I was getting addicted after having it for two days. Oh, I'm also gonna um, bring up. So there's there's a lot of things like, you know, Reddit where you'll, you know, everybody uses it differently, but yeah. I would always just click on Reddit and then go through like the popular posts. And it's just yeah. like, whatever came up, that's what I'm be looking at. Yeah, I didn't really follow anything specific. So, but I've also realized like there are there's like negative distractions, which are just totally mindless. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they're bad, right? Yeah, but there's yeah. also like positive distractions that still aren't good for you, but you think that they're good for you. <laughs> so like, you'll be like, oh, I'm going to go. Well, okay. So you plan out your whole day and mm -hmm. then you're like, okay, I'm going to get started. Well, actually, I kind of have always wanted to read this thing. So I'm just going to read that. And then you're like, oh, well, this looks really productive. So I'll, I'll go do that. And so you... You end yeah. up like trashing your whole day, which is, you know, your main path to getting or accomplishing your goals. Yeah. Um, and then you just like follow this, this other thing. I feel, um, okay. I feel like we shouldn't talk about it too much. Cause that feels like a whole conversation in itself. 
because I I think that kind of falls. It's good and bad. Well, right? right, yeah, yeah, but it like it falls more into the category of procrastination, which is a weird yeah. thing. I, I I don't think we should talk about it because it's it deserves its own hour of getting through. But there is this thing where when you have something to do that's important, that like this is the thing you're supposed to do, it's very easy to wind up doing literally anything else. I mean, if I have to do my taxes every like i'm like oh my god i gotta fix my sock drawer or like it's time to paint the house or whatever like it, anything. Right, anything yeah like let's get up on the roof and clean out those gutters i just i gotta do that today like anything seems right. good and it's weird and it doesn't make sense it's just because like there's something important and somehow uncomfortable and i just i like my brain wants me to do anything else in the world even if it's like really hard work it doesn't matter but I, like that i think that's procrastination and okay. i think that we gotta like treat that as its own special thing to even talk about okay yeah, yeah you're right because that doesn't have to just be uh social media because I'll, I'll do it with books or anything laying around anything oh I can yeah yeah, yeah. i can like get distracted yeah. doing anything be like oh I, yeah. I haven't made a paper airplane in a while let's go do that or right that'll whatever. yeah yeah okay all right so Okay, so there was there's been a few times in my life where I, I've been able to completely focus on like say drawing or learning or I guess I used to do this with music too, mm -hmm. but a couple times where like I've been able to work on it for multiple days in a row, um, I mean like completely like nothing else like you yeah, just get yeah. to be focused for like four days in a row where you're working on it from the time you wake up till the time you go to sleep and it's just like, well I I realize like the first or i noticed the first day is like kind of tough to get into it and then the second day is a little easier and then you just like yeah. hit this like i don't know what they call it in like games but you know your your winning streak yeah i guess your winning streak sure um yeah. and you you're just like on fire and all of a sudden you're like learning really easily and you're like getting things done i don't know like has that yeah. happened to you i, yeah, I, I yeah. think the reason why it happens to me is that you just or at least in the way that I've done it is I've just gotten so far from that uh, gambling reward thing, mm -hmm. like the the instant uh, dopamine stuff, that like my brain starts to readjust, and it's like, oh, this is how it's supposed to be all the time, and you you finally get there, and then it's you know next day something comes up and it's all over, but right, and you fall back into the trap. But no, I I definitely agree with that. I think that you do build up a momentum, um, or it's almost like getting stronger kind of like your brain's just more able to do it um you just kind of have to like flex those muscles a little bit but i also think that part of the reason why it's so hard at first like like i said i don't i don't actually want to waste time on reddit like it's not something i'm thinking about i want to do it's an escape like it's this thing that like i get into something uncomfortable for all kinds of reasons usually they're kind of emotional reasons you know i'm i'm not sure how it's going to turn out i'm not i start to question like whatever there's all kinds of reasons why something becomes uncomfortable and then you know those other distracting things are like a release from that but i think once you get into more of that groove or you've spent some time and you're working on it a lot of that stuff kind of dies down like you're not you're not having so much of an emotional like hurdle to get over where it's just it's what you're doing and it you know there's you become more comfortable with it your mind like isn't resisting as much anymore and i just right. don't i don't feel like i need that escape anymore i i think that like getting sometimes i have to force myself to get there it's like okay i'm gonna spend half an hour on this project and I just got to do it. And I know that I'm not going to want to, like, I'm going to want to kind of bail out and do something else. But once I get there and like some of that discomfort, just, it just kind of dies down for me. And then it just feels so much easier. So I think yeah. that's part of it for me. It it used to be that way with uh, sleeping and TV. At, at some really? point I started like leaving the TV on while I went to sleep. And then eventually like I would try to sleep without the TV. And then all of a sudden all these thoughts come up you start thinking mm -hmm. about all these things and you just can't sleep and you feel horrible and whatever. So you just flip the TV right back on mm -hmm. and leave it on. And then that's how you fall asleep. And so you become like, I don't know, so accustomed to that. So 
at some point I decided like, okay, I'm just never going to sleep with the TV on again. Mm -hmm. And for the first week or two or something, it's horrible. And you have to like face all of those thoughts that come up. Um, but eventually it just gets to the point where that's just part of your everyday thing. And mm -hmm. you, it, they stop coming up they stop being so scary. And then you're just able to mm -hmm. sleep. The I've same had... thing with, with boredom. I, I... Yeah. Actually, I think honestly, that's why um, podcasts are so popular. I think, a lot of people like want to not be alone with their thoughts, which I, I am one of those people. Like I definitely relate to that, but I do think your brain after a while, it, at least for me, maybe not for everybody, but like, I think it does become more comfortable. Like you get used to it. It's not, you, you stop feeling like you need that escape. Yeah. Um, I also really love podcasts. I listen to a lot of podcasts. No, I do too. And like, I mean, <laughs> I think they're great. I think everyone should listen to them, but yeah that's part of it just choose the right times to be distracted or uh, yeah like, or just be aware of like I, I don't i i I feel like that's kind of a big um like major point of what we've been talking about is just trying to recognize when and why those things are happening is very right. important um yeah, like if you only have like two hours of the day to work on the thing that you really want to work on. Yeah. And every single day during those two hours, you end up on Reddit or right. watching YouTube videos or whatever. Make a change. Yeah, right? yeah, definitely. I, and like recognize yeah. that that's probably happening because you are uncomfortable with this thing you're trying to accomplish for whatever reason. That's certainly how it feels to me. And I think if yeah. you recognize that it's going to be uncomfortable at first, but it won't last forever. Um, you know, if you can get through that first 30 minutes and then take a five minute break and go back to it, like that starts to go away. At least it usually does. And yes. I would even say if it doesn't, if like you're still grinding it out after 45 minutes or an hour, maybe that's just not the thing you need to do right now. Um, like there, maybe you're just not in the right place and you can go do something else. But, um, yeah. I found that like there's some things that I, I get into and like, it just doesn't really doesn't i just i can't really engage i gotta do something else i come back to it a day later and it feels great like yeah i think that can be a good way to handle it too yeah a good thing to to see if like social media is uh really bad is to just time how much or record the time that you spend on it <laughs> so like oh i spent yeah seven hours watching youtube videos today yeah that's probably, that's probably and I, I, well i mean it, if if you worked your ass off for two weeks and then you want a day off and you want to spend time watching youtube then do it i mean it like you should relax sometimes but yeah like i said when for me at least if i work hard and i'm focused and then i get like a specific time of break where it's like okay for this five minute block or for like this entire weekend like i don't I'm not going to attempt to accomplish anything. I already did, and I want to relax. Yeah. Usually, I'm not on Reddit. I'm usually doing something else. I don't want to anymore. I don't think that those those things, I don't think you do them because you really want to do them. I think you do them because you really don't want to do something else. That was well said. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah, it's a way of avoiding something. Yeah, it's an escape thing. Yeah. Um. Well, is that it? Has that been an hour? Yeah, about. Okay. Let's yeah. Let's leave it at that. All right, sounds good. Yeah, well, good luck, everybody. Um, <laughs> again, I think it's a a huge problem that will never ever go away. I think well, it will get. Sad. I it is, but like at least, at least start thinking about it, and like really paying attention to what's going on in your head. I mean, that's been the biggest thing for me is to just recognize when and why and and try to start putting things in place to to minimize it yeah because it is way more fulfilling to to do a a big thing like like learn yes a, yes you <laughs> other than just scrolling through so, yeah. pictures all day you you will be happier with your life with i mean you know it's okay to do it sometimes like to relax but like you've you cannot let it stop you from doing stuff that matters that you really want to do all right well thanks everybody for 
hanging out. Um, we'll be back next week with something else to talk about. <laughs>